ऐसा ए ओ चिड़िया तूने आंसर लिख करा चलो Reason that women live say. longer, Mark. Let me tell you, it is because we are stronger yes. and we are happier at the end of the day than most men, and that no. is factual, and you know it. When when men are married to women who scream like you, they just want to die sooner. I'm not. Really? <laughs> is that what we're doing? Is that how we're talking? Oh my! Welcome back to another Christ Life production. I am your host, Jay Spirit, aka Jazz. Man, today's topic, obviously, are we really talking to each other like that? Are we really doing these actions the day of the wedding in front of everybody? <laughs> are you are you really just so selfish and on yourself that you can't be selfless for a day that's meant for the both of you? Seriously. Today's topic, we are on five steps to a greater marriage. Um... This is something that needs to be talked about, as you can obviously see. This is something that needs to be encouraged uh, amongst today's social dynamic out here. Picking up girls off of platforms such as Facebook and, and Tinder, dating websites, all these, all these different ones. It's not about meeting someone and falling in love, being the best version of yourself and presenting that to somebody that you actually want to be with for the rest of your life. We're not doing that. <laughs> we are in it to have sex and get as much of it as possible for our own pleasures and our own selfish desires. It's not about what I can do for you. It's about what you can do for me, which puts us in a terrible spot when it comes to not even just being in a relationship with someone, but also the example we set for the children that we are raising for the next generation. Did you know divorce rates in America, at least in the this year are climbing. When I did my research, what I had found was the divorce rate in America was at 38%. Right now, it's probably more towards 50%, especially with the pandemic that's going on. Because obviously, that isn't the only pandemic that's happening. <laughs> divorce rates are going ham, okay? Now to another side effect of the coronavirus. It might be driving up divorce rates. As millions of people self-quarantine in order to prevent the spread of the disease, divorce lawyers across the country say a quarantine experience, particularly where there are underlying issues of resentment and poor communication, it could be devastating to a marital relationship. So, I mean, there are certain marriages that are on the brink to begin with, and I think that this experience is going to probably push a lot of them over the edge. What you have here is you have a lot of people that, as you said, are in close quarters. You have children that are home now, so you're dealing with people that are trying to work from home and then also to be homeschooling their children. You have people that are kind of on top of each other in a way that they just haven't experienced before. And a lot of people, you know, you think about it, when you get married, you're kind of in the business of raising children. Everybody goes to work, everybody comes home, everybody has their roles, and now everything's in chaos. And I think it's causing a lot of stress, not to mention the markets obviously going down. That's causing additional stress. Then you have situations where you have people, you know, that don't know if they're going to have job security. And then on top of it, you try to distract yourself by going to watch a sports game, and you can't do that either. So you're really putting people in a very, very difficult situation. And the sad thing about that is at least 26% of them are Christians. So at the time of me doing the research, 38% of America's population was showing a divorce rate of 38%, and 26% of them were Christians. According to Market Watch, some U.S. lawyers see a 25 to 30 percent increase in divorce cases every year in January. Well, tis the season for splitting up. The divorce rate spikes right after the new year. It's so noticeable that January has earned the nickname Divorce Month. They don't want to be disruptive to the family, to their children over Thanksgiving, over Christmas, and they, they put off until January. And, of course, new year, new beginning. January, new year. New you, fresh start, I can see it, I guess. Of course, the holidays always make it harder because, you know, you love family, you love your kids, and, you know, you always want to be around the ones you love, so. It alleges divorce is a $50 billion industry. That's nearly 16 times more money generated than by the United States wedding industry, which is worth $3 billion. 
A recent bank rate survey says the average cost of divorce in the U.S. is around $15,000 per person, but it could be much higher. Fees can range anywhere into the six figures, just depending on how much people are really arguing. And everything is split. All the assets, the debts, um, and, you know, when it comes to kids, you can't really divide kids, so you're talking about a parenting plan. Studies also showed of those 38 and 26 percentages there, 15 to 20 percent of them were sexless marriages. I don't even understand that. <laughs> I don't even understand what that even means. Sexless marriage, you know what that means? That means that you are roommates. <laughs> you are roommates, man. You are married and obligated to be with somebody for the rest of your life and you can't even be intimate with them. Your desires and your wants and needs are not being met on an intimate, affectionate level. That is beyond sad. I, again, I can't comprehend it. I've been in situations where I was in that type of situation just for a short period of time, mainly because of disagreements uh, and we're trying to figure out the best way to get through this, whatever the hurdle may be. But as far as like literally living year after year after year, we ain't talking days, we ain't talking weeks, heck we ain't even talking months. We're talking year after year after year. I can't even do it. Please welcome celebrity divorce attorney from Bravo's Untying the Knot. Oh, that's such a sad name. <laughs> this, this lovely lady is Vicki Ziegler. I'm glad everyone's sitting down in your audience. One, every 13 seconds there's a divorce in this country. That's true. 2.4 million people get divorced in the United States. So instead of being another statistic, it's crucial to do premarital planning, preventative measures before you take your I do's so you won't be that person that ultimately sees me in divorce court. But it sounds like you're going to be employed for a good long time. Well, first time marriages end in about 49%. That's the rate. Second, wow. But listen to this, Rachel. Marriage rates don't go down, they go up. Second time marriages end in a divorce rate of 62%. And third time marriages, if you're brave enough to get married for the third time, 73% failure rate. I can't do it. I can't. I can't. And what I mean by I can't do it is I can't fathom that actually being in uh, somebody existing in such a dilemma. I, I can't. That situation just, it doesn't, my brain can't wrap around it, seriously. It is because of selfishness. It's really simple. Um, there's just too many selfish people along with too many distractions. People are not setting their priorities. Like, I will never understand how a woman or a man, and I didn't even know men was doing this. To them, men doing this is like you telling me unicorns was just running down a farm field somewhere. A dude doing the same exact thing that I have been mainly, mainly seeing women do is beyond me. I, I just, I really can't fathom such a situation, but it does exist. You know, I never, and I told my wife this, personally, when we were first dating, and, and you know, as we were growing and getting to know one another, I told her that I personally could never, ever look at her as a video game. Now, there's a couple reasons I use that analogy, is because, one, that's what kids do. They play with something for a little bit, and what do they do with that when they're done? They leave it in the floor, they leave it anywhere. It doesn't matter, they're done playing with it. I told my wife I could never look at you as a video game before I even knew she would be my wife. I could never sit there and be into you, loving you, enjoying you. And then all of a sudden one day, hmm, I'm done. To me, that's not logical because people are not video games. People are not something that you play with for a little bit to entertain yourself and then you just dust them off. That's why a lot of musicians are in the situation that they're in. They can't stand the thought of being in a situation such as this. People love you, love you, love you, and then they're done with you and they throw you away. And now you're nobody. You're nobody to be regarded. You're nobody to be listened to or thought of or anything. You don't do that with people. As we are building this relationship, how I see you now is how I'm going to always see you. That's just all to it. If I'm crazy, if you if you can put on a, a, a 3X shirt and cover up every curve, you could put on my jogging pants or my shorts that cover up everything, and you walk into a room and I still, I'll be right back. I'm going to always view you that, like, that way. And I feel like everybody should. Step one. <laughs>
<laughs> now that we're finally starting. Do not listen to advice from unmarried people. I am talking about people that have never been married, they barely even hold down a relationship, are so stuck in their ways because they're, they're older and you really honestly can't tell them anything, let alone you're supposed to take advice from them. You don't know what their motives are. You don't know their intentions, even though they may be good. But keep in mind, they're not speaking from experience. They are speaking about what they want or would want to do in case they were ever in the situation that you are in. Then you have biases. What is their objective or motives for weighing in on your marriage? You don't know. Even if they're a friend, even if there have been a day one, you still don't know. If that person is in it for you, if they actually want to be there for you, or they're in there for their own objectives to get whatever it is that they can get out of the situation. Step two, realistic expectations, okay? Men and women are two different species, okay? We're gonna get that off right off back. Two different species. In this step, one must realize that there are a couple things going on here. Here we have the expectations of a woman as to what her husband is supposed to do. And then we have the expectation of a husband as to what his wife is supposed to do. And then we have two people and what they think a marriage should be versus what a real marriage is. You're a guy, you're not gonna think the way your wife thinks. You're a woman, you're not gonna think the way your husband thinks. Unless kindred spirits, you know, your maturity level is on the same. For the most part, you are thinking the same way. Your friends, you were friends first and then you became lovers and then you became married. So therefore, if you're going from that perspective, you're still gonna run into, okay, we kind of think alike. Every situation is different and everybody is different. What you perceive as a problem and as an issue, husband, the wife might not think two, two feathers of it. She ain't thinking about it at all. It ain't even nothing that crossed her mind. So you have gotta keep that in mind when it is you do have an issue because you're both in it together. If one person's feeling one way, you gotta be objective and not biased, open-hearted and open-minded about the situation and keep it that way. So that way when you do come together to talk about it it's all about listening and hearing the other person and then coming together and agreeing upon how to handle and come up with a solution for the situation that is the expectations that is and that's whether it's expectations it's whether you think something should be a certain way regardless stay happy above above it all because when it's really all said and done you would never want to let a situation become more than what you and your wife are. If you and your wife are here, whatever issue or conflict that occurs should never rise above the love of you and your wife or you and your husband, whichever one. So as long as you guys put your love first, you'll get through it. But you do have to realize you're two different people with two different expectations and two different ways of thinking. Period. Let me stop here. <laughs> if you're getting value, if you're getting great content from Christ Life Productions, I appreciate the like, the subscribe, the bell icon. Please hit that for more notifications and more great content coming from this channel. Um, if you're new to it, I do apologize for not introducing myself in the beginning, but uh, I welcome you. And uh, please share this with your friends, with your family, with, your, with whoever it is you may think needs to benefit from this information. All right. I do appreciate you. And we're going to get back to our regularly scheduled programming. Thank you. Step three, communication, 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 communication all the time. You can't communicate just how you feel at the moment. You can't communicate just how you want to be treated for a moment. You need to let it be known how you feel and what you need almost at all times uh, until, you know, you're getting to like where I'm at, 10 years of actual companionship, okay? So there are things that I already know that she expects me to take care of or resolve. 
get it done so that it doesn't become a problem later. Until you're in that, that space, communication, communication, communication. And you can't be afraid to communicate about anything. Because the moment you do that, you're putting a wall up. You're putting a wall up, you're dividing, you're dividing, you're, 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 you're pulling up defenses that your spouse didn't even know was there. And they're running into it. And every time they run into it, you get upset. And they're like, what happened? <laughs> Just because you love someone or are in love with someone doesn't mean you or they can read or know what the other person is thinking. Just because you don't know what somebody is thinking doesn't mean you're not in love. Loving someone doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do every single thing that expresses it, if that makes sense. What I'm saying is like, my wife did not hug or kiss me today. Before she left for work today, she did not hug or kiss me. Just because she didn't hug and kiss me today, doesn't mean that she won't hug and kiss me tomorrow, okay? So, just because that happened, does that mean that she doesn't love me? Does that mean that we're not communicating? Not at all. I know she's got things to do. I know that she's busy and she sometimes they forgets because she's too busy thinking about this or doing that and the same vice versa for me. That doesn't mean we're not in love with one another. That doesn't mean we don't care for one another. That just simply means at that particular point in time, we didn't express our love for one another. If this is a problem, it's my duty as her husband to let her know, especially if it's bothering me, that, hey, honey, you forgot to do this. And it actually is taking a toll on me or I'm feeling a certain type of way about the situation. If I didn't tell her about it and she went two and three days down the line and was still doing the same thing, oh, we got a problem. But it's a bigger problem if I communicate it and she still continued to not do what I asked. That's when you got an issue. But as long as you're communicating and the person is actually hearing you and responding to you and actually trying to do the things that you're asking, then it's just about working with them. Yeah, they're gonna make mistakes. None of us are perfect. So why expect imperfect humans to perfectly meet your uncommunicated expectations? Speak to each other to make sure you're on the same page about all things such as honesty, finances, affection, intimacy. Also talk about the children, if any, and if you want to have some, giving birth and raising them. You gotta communicate. Because if you don't, how are you going to get through any hurdles that may come up if you're not communicating, if you're not on the same page, all right? Step four, the influence of others. Okay, make note of that. The influence of others. Unlike me, y'all may have a lot of friends. Unlike me, y'all may have family to go to. Unlike me, y'all may watch movies, or even listen to music that for the most part is about relationships, which have sold us a lie as to what love is, as well as what to expect in a marriage, which is almost completely fictional. How honestly it is, as it doesn't exist when you allow these and others to tell you how each other should act, or the they're, you're allowing them to set your expectations in your own marriage. Who's supposed to run a household? Who's wearing the pants in a relationship? Happy wife, happy life. You both need one another in order for it to be a marriage. In all honesty, in every aspect. How do you think children come out saying mommy and daddy? They need both of y'all. They don't want one or the other, they want both. You can't have a sandwich with only one piece of bread. And if you fold it in half, it don't really count as a complete sandwich. <laughs> I know what y'all are so, so, so stupid like that, man. These type of sayings ultimately just cause arguments and disagreements between you. Neither of you suggested what you're now fighting over. You know what I'm saying? Like you went out and told somebody something about your situation. They gave you an expectation as to what they would do in that situation or how they would react to it. And then you listened to it and brought it home. Your spouse went and did the same exact thing. You're now fighting about what you each are doing 
rather than the actual issue that caused it in the first place. Because you let somebody else that was outside of your marriage influence your marriage. Y'all in it between y'all, period. <laughs> you let the outside be what it is, the outside. This is y'all, y'all unity, y'all household, y'all kingdom. This is king and queen working it out. Let no man put us under what God has brought together, including yourselves. Because I love my wife. Love her to death from head to toe. She get on my nerves. <laughs> and I get on hers too. But I can't end something that my God has put together. Don't be so prideful that you can't evaluate yourself. You're never wrong. You're always right. You know the best. You are the best. No one can tell you nothing. And you think that way, you're being selfish. And not only are you being selfish, you should be by yourself if that's the case. You're thinking as a single person that wants things done their way. Okay, well then do it your way by yourself. Why would you waste this other person's time? Come on now. Step five, love like kids do. Your child doesn't care what color you are. Your child doesn't care how much money you make. Your child doesn't care who are you friends with. Your child doesn't care what type of job you have. Your child does not care if you're angry or if you're sad. Your child only cares about one thing, loving you. Y'all should love the way y'all did when you first, first fell in love. That's why I said to her, you're not a video game. You're not something I'm gonna play with for a little bit and get tired of, you're not. When I love you, I'm gonna love you forever. That's why I was the first to tell her this. I know, a little too, too much too much personal information out here, you dig me? But I had to. I had to let her know how I felt because I felt it. I wasn't afraid of, of anything because I'm confident in me. And if I'm and if I'm if I am trying to build what I vision myself as having, then I'm gonna be up front with it and I'm gonna face it how it is. That's what stand my ground where I'm going forward that's where I'm going so therefore my wife I know you don't know it now but I love you she was like <laughs> she was like <laughs> oh, oh okay <laughs> thank you I, I feel great that you care for me in that way. Um, and I said, you don't have to say it. I'm just letting you know how I feel about you. If you get there in a shorter amount of time than whatever it is that you're expecting, so be it. Nonetheless, just know I love you. And that's what it was. I'm letting her take her time. I'm still going to continue doing it. And I'm still going to continue doing the things that I said I was going to do when it came to caring for her and being there for her. Especially after I've already said that I love you. If I love you, then I love you. That's what it is. It's not conditional. It's not, oh, okay, well, you made me feel good today for the moment. Come on, bro. I, I, I need my wife. I want you. You, step five, need to love like children and need to love each other the way you did when you first met each other. Literally play like children. That's what my wife and I used to do. It sounds funny, but it was true, especially considering the fact that it was just us. I married her at the age of 24. She was only three years younger than me. She was 21, okay? So we were like, we really, we weren't kids, but in the marriage perspective, we were kids, okay? We were kids in love with one another, love to be around one another. I, date, I, I befriended her for a year, then I dated her for a year, then we got married. Couldn't ask for better. I could not ask for better. That The way that all of that flowed together so cohesively, it's, 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 more, of a, it's more of a fantasy than it is in a, a reality. But you can't make this stuff up. This is what happened. This is what transpired. All my witnesses was there in my marriage. I got the whole thing on video, okay? You know what I'm saying? So everybody's seen our history. And my and one of uh one of my close friends at the time was saying, like, bro, man, like y'all got history together, bro. Like y'all, I seen y'all grow together. 
firsthand right there. Oh, honestly, from the moment I met her, living the dream. So all the people that sit there and tell you success is this, success is that. When she said, I do, I became the richest man in the world. Keep your money, keep your materials. I became the richest man in the world the one moment my wife said, I do. Those, those are the steps, baby. Those are the steps, 100% all the way through and through. I know this is a longer video, but I'm look, I'm going ham with it. I'm going ham with the editing. I'm going ham with everything that I can do. I'm gonna put out the best content that I possibly can because this is real for me, man. I've got, I've got music out there. I've got people responding to me, you dig me?